Okay, seriously, guys, my life has been changed forever. Gorillas. Do we know gorillas? Gerade einmal zehn Minuten. So lange will ein Berliner Startup für die Lieferung von Lebensmitteln brauchen. I don't wanna go by. I ordered groceries from gorillas. And it was here in acht Minuten. Acht Minuten. Just six minutes. Und das Bier ist kalt oder was? I am absolutely speechless. Wie macht ihr das? That's the fun about it. Oh, tight, don't let go. Ich wusste, dass wenn das klappt, dann wird es abnormal groß werden. We raised one billion. You started 24 months ago. You have now 15,000 employees. <lacht> How the hell did we do this? Oh, tight, don't let go. Yeah, don't let go. Enjoy we are here to change and we're gonna change it. Is there a reason? Das hat so vorher noch keiner gemacht in Deutschland. Potentially next Amazon, but this time coming out of Europe. We build a fucking amazing business. There were things that we probably weren't prepared for. Gorillas hat in der ganzen Zeit wahnsinnig viel Geld verbrannt. I don't see anything that Gorillas is doing. That's going to be generating large profits. We talk about world domination now. Die Geschichte von Gorillas ist einmalig. Deutschland ist kein Start-up-Land. Deshalb war man so berauscht. Eine der ganz großen Trendgeschichten sicherlich dieses Jahres. Mit Höhen und Tiefen in Rekordzeit. Aber wer steckt hinter Gorillas? Kaga Sumer was born in Istanbul in 1987. In 2015 he founded his first startup with which he wanted to change the way consumers do their laundry. After 10 months he left the job and started working for a large management consultancy. Three years later he came to Germany. Welcome to the Omar podcast, Khan Sumer, founder of Gorillas. Hey Philipp, thanks for thanks for having me. Gorillas obviously is a bike-based business. You're like delivering by bike, yeah. but also like you rode your bike from from Istanbul to to China once. Uh, yeah, this was one of the best things I've ever done in my life. But bike love is not only also the China trip, you know. When I came to Germany, I had 100 euros, 88 euros first day. I bought a bike. I have a bike tattoo, you know. I carry my bike all around. And now that we changed this second biggest consumer spend on two wheels, it feels super special. Okay, let's let's try to understand how it started here. I had absolutely zero money, minus 8,000. It was shitty, yeah? in many ways. So I was at the, I think I was at the bottom, bottom, yeah, like in my mind. And I, we just went to Reve. It was like, a, I don't know, a Saturday or a Friday that we had to fill the fridge. I don't know, you know, like, I don't know how it happened, why it happened, but this five euro bill stick to my leg. I remember that moment and I was thinking, you know, what to do, how can I, like, because I, pay, like, there's no way to live. It was like no way to live, I cannot live here like that. I took that five euro bill, I went to my room, turned around the couch, <laughs> emptied everything, yeah, emptied everything, got, the, like, got the shelves from Obi. 19 euros per shelf, eh? then then put one of the pro some of the products that we got for the weekly, you know, our our fridge on the like on the shelves, and and off we go, man. I didn't stop after that, you know. So you found money on the street. You took this as a sign. <laughs> then you, you came back to your apartment and you and you created a warehouse in your apartment. And, and how did you find your first customers? I went to the street. Hey, hello. Hey. You're doing a grocery delivery, 10 minute delivery. Oh, okay. So you order groceries, 10 minutes, we knock the door. I found like 40, 45 yeah. people and I made a WhatsApp group. Guys, thank you very much for joining this group. I'm Khan, founder of Gorillas, and at the moment it's a magical moment for me to talk to you. So thank you very much for making it happen. 
what we do is super simple. If we have the technology to go out to the Mars, to the moon, grocery shopping has to be radically faster and much more convenient, yeah? That's why we do Gorillas. We deliver groceries at retail prices and in 10 minutes. So please stay tuned and thank you very much for joining this group, yeah? So, ciao. Did you already have this idea of gorillas with you? I mean, I know there's a, that's a Turkish version of gorillas. Um, mm -hmm. Getter, yeah. Yes, a company like Getter and GoPuff and several others did exist before Khan created gorillas. However, what Khan did is he came up with a gimmick. And the gimmick that Khan came up with was 10-minute delivery. It's not a crazy idea. I mean, it's a super simple idea, in my point of view, yeah? like I deliver groceries to the people that I can deliver in 10 minutes because they want it in 10 minutes. It didn't begin as an idea, to be honest. So it worked like a charm. And then I said, okay, now, now we need to make this for real, you know, we need to rent a place. I began pitching, yeah? Man, everyone's laughing. Like, I mean, they're listening to me and they're laughing while they're listening, but in a, in a teasing way. And I said, okay, I need to get this money in. At that point, I called my mom. <laughs> I still remember. And we said, okay, now we rent the first place. Ich weiß echt noch ziemlich genau, als die Nachricht reinkam, ähm, irgendwie zu meinem Mitbewohner gegangen und so, yo, schau mal, was ein Joke irgendwie, <lacht> klassischer Scam, 10 Minuten Grocery Delivery. Nächster Tag mit, mit Kahn telefoniert und so die erste Aussage war so, Yeah, we can do it, but you're not gonna get any money. Ich war irgendwie so bought in, dass das Ding halt irgendwie funktionieren kann und hatte irgendwie auch einfach Bock, so was ein bisschen Verrückteres zu machen. Khan approached me via LinkedIn. He sent me a message, like a random message, like, hey, I have something great, wanna meet? And I'm like, okay, let's check it out. I, I, when I met Khan, I realized, like, ah, fuck, I need to join this thing. I came to the office, which was the beautiful Danziger Straße. War. Super, the Rümpelkammer, there were two Regale, drin gehabt, vielleicht irgendwie 100 Produkte or so, uh, irgendwie ein Tisch. So, we were six people and had two and a half Stühle. <laughs> One was ohne Lehne zu dem Zeitpunkt schon. And am ersten Tag war es dann auch wirklich so, dass wir als wir live gegangen sind, das halt irgendwie in, in die WhatsApp-Gruppe gepostet haben. Die ersten zwei, drei, vier Wochen halt dann so wirklich da gesessen und gewartet. First you dream and you just convince yourself that is the thing. I knew it, you know, like I, I knew it. I cannot explain you why I knew it, but first I knew it, then I began giving some reasons why it would work. And then... Ping! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Let's check, let's check quickly. One, two, three. Choco Misty, Lace, Kettle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Solid. Go, 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 go! Woo! Ich meine, wir haben auch übertrieben, so. Wir sind halt wirklich immer Vollgas, immer so schnell wie es geht. Du kommst halt in der Tür an, rennst den vierten Stock hoch, klingelt an der Tür und jeder guckt dich erstmal extrem verblüfft irgendwie an. Ja, aber wie macht ihr das? We work our asses off. 
at some point, it just escalated. During like the peak hours, there would be what I call a casino. So I'd be doing some sort of design or marketing thing, and then I'd have to quickly jump on a ride. In my first week, I hired 35 riders. Just rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled, and it became a big thing. So it's Friday, it's 10.30. So we are in the second warehouse of Torstrasse. It's the third month of the business. Yeah, I'm super proud that the team owns it like 100%. Gorillas brauchte verschiedene Warehouses innerhalb einer Stadt, weil es geht eben nicht, wenn du sagst, ja, wir wollen innerhalb von wenigen Minuten liefern und dann ist das eine Warehouse aber am anderen Ende der Stadt. Das ist einfach zeitlich nicht möglich. Deswegen haben sie eben angefangen, überall kleine dezentrale Warehouses aufzubauen, um dann eben die einzelnen Kunden schnell beliefern zu können. So in order to deliver those products quickly, they open up a dark store. Customers never go in the dark stores. The workers inside these stores when they receive an order they fulfill the order as quickly as possible the goal is to pick the products and fulfill the order within one to four minutes at most because the goal is to give a courier someone riding a scooter or a bicycle 10 minutes to actually ride and make the delivery when we opened the second warehouse at Mitte, that was the first warehouse where we had our office set up, if you can call it that. It was just kind of like adjacent side to the actual warehouse. Wir hatten dann noch extrem viele Bugs irgendwie so, auch damals irgendwie dann Ronny, den, den CTO, kennengelernt halt über so ein random Telefonat, so dem irgendwie mein PayPal-Passwort gegeben, um irgendwas zu testen, so irgendeinem Typ in Libanon, den ich noch nie gesehen hatte vorher. We did so many crazy things, because we all felt that that way, you know, and like it was Khan actually spreading this pipe, like, this is your thing, you know, like, let's go for it, let's make it happen. Oh man, it's horrible. I'm, I'm a bit shy. How are you doing? Khan is authentic as you can get. <laughs> He's completely with no filter, no frills attached. He's an incredibly humble guy. He wears his heart on his sleeve and it's super refreshing to have a CEO with this kind of personality. Literally 10, 10, 11 weeks ago, like we were just trying to find some money in my living room and like we we're saying, fuck man, what I'm gonna do, you know? And all people like you are going towards this and kind of following our passion to this and growing our passion, to be honest, like not only following. And I'm very happy that you guys are with us and you're like the, you're, you're like the face, you're, you're the heart of the company. So please keep like this. So thank you very much for that. The energy was, was very clear. We all really believed that this was going to work. And I mean, from there, I guess the, the rest is history, right? Like, the thing exploded. I have a new app entdeckt. The people were so fascinated gewesen and had so Bock, this auch irgendwie to erzählen. In den ersten drei, vier Monaten, wir haben kein Marketing gemacht. Wir haben jetzt gerade bei Gorillas bestellt. Und hier ist er schon da. Acht Minuten lieber Zeit. Gorillas ist ein Dienst, der kickt genau bei deinen inneren Instinkten. Sagenhafte acht Minuten. Hi, wie geht das so schnell? <lacht> Ich komme aus einer alten Lebensmittelhändlerfamilie. Daher weiß ich, dass das Liefern so alt ist, wie es Lebensmittelgeschäfte gibt oder Einzelhandelsgeschäfte. Das ist ein Service, um Kunden zu binden, aber verdienen konnte man damit noch nie Geld. Die Vorstellung, dass sich da eine Revolution draus entwickelt, die hatte ich nicht. Man muss sich vorstellen, dass diese Lieferung, die funktioniert so, als würde der Briefträger immer, wenn er Briefe in einen Briefkasten geworfen hat, wieder umdrehen und zu seinem Lager zurückgehen und sich für den nächsten Briefkasten ein paar neue Briefe raussuchen. Dass das kein nachhaltig erfolgreiches Geschäftsmodell sein kann, das liegt auf der Hand eigentlich. Oder man muss es sich sehr, sehr gut vergüten lassen. Um Warenlager zu mieten, um Rider einzustellen, um die Ware zu kaufen, braucht es ja erstmal Geld. 
Von daher war relativ schnell klar, okay, um das groß zu machen, muss man auch externes Kapital einsammeln. When Khan started pitching in the beginning, no investor actually believed it because they thought this business model would not work in Europe. Wer braucht so etwas in einer Stadt, wo man also wirklich fußläufig ganz schnell zur nächsten Apotheke, zum nächsten Supermarkt kommt? Wer braucht da äh, einen Bringdienst, jemand, der unter Zeitdruck arbeiten muss? Das ist eigentlich nicht notwendig. Kleine Start-ups, die jetzt wirklich auf Dauer äh, zu großen alternativen Lebensmitteleinzelhändlern in Deutschland geworden wären, die würden wir kennen, denke ich. Aber wir sehen keine. They believed there is no chance to make money in, in Germany. We came and we said, you know what? We'll make it happen. The moment I believe in something, I can find these other crazy people that, that wants to walk the same path. Wir befinden uns ja hier im größten Konsumentenmarkt, ja, im, im Einzelhandelssegment und äh, versuchen eigentlich was Unmögliches. Und jeder Experte sagt, das funktioniert nicht so. Und dann ist jemand halt naiv genug zu glauben, er hat trotzdem eine Chance. Da muss man so Leute haben wie Kahn, die so visionär sind und die auch trotz allen Leuten, die reinkommen und sagen, hey, nee, das geht nicht, weil so und so und das geht nicht, das geht nicht, das geht nicht. Der einfach sagt, nee, ist mir völlig egal, ich gehe einfach durch die Wand und mach das. Gorillas has raised 44 million dollars in Series A. 44 million dollars. 44 million dollars. In der ersten Finanzierungsrunde, in der sogenannten Series A, kamen 44 Millionen US-Dollar zusammen. Und ich würde schon sagen, dass das eine ziemlich große Summe war für eine Series A. Ich habe Kahan kurz kennengelernt. Dann haben wir vielleicht eine Viertelstunde gesprochen. Ich habe dann gesagt, ich glaube, du wirst nicht viel Marketing brauchen, deswegen kann ich dir nicht helfen, aber wenn du irgendwann mal äh, Geld oder Hilfe brauchst, äh, ich schreibe dir einen Blanko-Check, äh, für, für was immer du äh, damit machen willst. Halt Supermärkte für furchtbar ineffizient, die sourcen 80 Prozent der Arbeit an ihre Kunden aus. Deswegen hat mich das so umgehauen, dass ich wusste, dieses Produkt wird Leute begeistern und sie werden es von alleine weitererzählen wollen und damit angeben wollen, fast in sozialen Medien. Once Gorilla started proving that this business is actually working, people love it, uh, there is more demand, people are sharing about it, then it is nature of any business, then immediate competition starts. Jeder kann Essen liefern. Das heißt, man muss sich tatsächlich fragen, wie kann man sich solch am Markt differenzieren? Eine der ersten Diskussionen, die ich mit Kahn hatte, war, dass ich ihm gesagt habe, keiner versteht das Konzept Gorillas, weil die alle nur in Schwarz rumfahren und Gorillas nicht draufsteht. Und Kahn hat gesagt, ich mache meine Fahrer nicht zu Werbeflächen und wir lassen die nicht irgendwie in pinken Anzügen rumfahren, nur damit mehr Leute die Marke kennenlernen. At Gorillas, we never stop riding. Gorillas created a new way in which to even dress employees, to brand their business. They did some very creative things in marketing. Right from the very beginning, we put brand at the utmost priority and we understood the value that that would bring us. Gorillas deliver groceries in minutes. So instead of going to the supermarket. Our first marketing campaign, we were saying, okay, let's be bold, let's do a bold entry. What do we do? We do skydive to the delivery area. Numbers-wise, it didn't work at all. Yeah, so it wasn't the most successful marketing campaign that the world has ever seen. But since it's a bold bet, we appreciate it and we celebrate that a lot. We deliver groceries, so you can do whatever. That costs a lot of money. In the case of Gorillas, on average, Gorillas had to spend more than one hundred dollars to attract one new customer. So regardless if that customer only placed an order for maybe $5, it cost $100 to actually attract that customer and make that delivery. Gorillas brauchte ziemlich viel Kapital ziemlich schnell, weil es gab auf einmal viel Konkurrenz und da ist eben immer das ist so ein Spiel auf Zeit. Gibt es schon Gorillas? Kennt ihr die? 
gibt die ja schon Gorillas. Sie no groceries. Und der andere Punkt ist eben auch, dass es um Masse geht, weil die Margen in, in diesem Segment sind super, super klein. Und wenn du überhaupt jemals in die Nähe einer positiven Bilanz kommen willst, dann musst du eben die Masse auf deiner Seite haben. And the only way that gorillas could scale was if they had money to fund that expansion. We love taking bold pass and we go for the bold pass and we believe that this impossible thing is possible. Ahead of my time and that's a race against my past. Whenever they clock me, that's 2000 on the dash. Wusste, dass wenn das klappt, dann wird es abnormal groß werden. There was so much to do because we had big dreams, like crazy, crazy big dreams. And Khan just has this ability to set unrealistic challenges and just make it happen. Als ich angefangen habe, sind wir jede Woche 10% gewachsen. Ich habe sowas noch nie gesehen. In der Company wurde es so langsam relativ klar, dass da irgendwie was Großes passiert. Und dann irgendwie mittags um 12 auf Slack so. Welcome to the All hands, actually, this one, this one is like the first all hands, first all hands that we, that we have. And I mean, today is exactly, today is exactly one year almost like, on, like since we begin building. Diese Tension, die da in der Luft lag, war so geil. Also so dieses, diese, dieses Leuchten in den Augen von, von allen und, und wie besonders das ist, was, was jetzt gleich passieren wird. We have something in mind, we want to change things. And we just look, you know, like where we're going, you know, we need to look at the attraction, not to the distraction. So by doing this, yeah, we closed today $290 million of funding over 1 billion euro valuation. Berlin startup Gorillas makes history when becoming a unicorn less than a year after being founded. This is the fastest unicorn in European space. Wow. Das war so ein Moment, wo, wo einem irgendwie ein riesen Stein vom Herzen gefallen ist irgendwie, weil man einfach gemerkt hat so, boah krass, irgendwie das, das was wir gemacht haben, ist echt irgendwie bigger than ourselves, es ist echt irgendwie ziemlich groß. So, I'm super, super happy to announce, like this is for last one month. Uh, I'm, I'm just waiting to announce this. Like this is just a small appreciation uh, that, we, that, that, that we would like to share, uh, which is like a beginning of a new tradition. We, we will, one million, one million dollars. Oh my God. Anyways. One million dollar, like you deserve it more than anyone else, man. Once money starts pouring in, you can use it to scale fast to reach out to more people. We have every week a new city opened, new warehouse. You open a warehouse and people come and dance in front of it, yeah? Have you ever seen a group of people dancing in front of a supermarket? That is the new normal, right? What Consumer did was not start a company. He helped launch an industry. But more importantly, Consumer and Gorillas really created a movement. This is exactly how we create impact. We could just see the growth that was happening that hasn't been done before. People started comparing us to the likes of Amazon. <laughs> it was just, like, ridiculous. We are now not talking about one billion ambition blood. We're talking about world domination now. The reason why you're doing this is because you're a piece of shit company that doesn't pay the fucking workers.
there were things that we probably weren't prepared for. And we ask all our colleagues to stand in solidarity with us to join the blockade of the door. Das heute der zweite Tag des Streiks, nachdem einem Mitarbeiter fristlos gekündigt wurde, dafür, dass er ein bisschen zu spät kam. We are here to make sure that our voices are heard, that our salaries are paid. Everyone has probably read in the press there is some payroll issues. Im Management der Belegschaft äh, passieren sicherlich Fehler. Auch das ist einigermaßen normal. Man muss es, wie gesagt, daran messen, glaube ich, dass 5.000, 6.000 Leute im letzten Jahr ähm, geheiert wurden. But how a company that works with so many people doesn't don't pay the don't have like a system that pay the the, the works correctly is unbearable. Und es ist überhaupt keine Entschuldigung. So jeder Rider, der irgendwie in einem Monat nicht bezahlt wird, tut mir persönlich wirklich im Herzen weh. And we want this to be the rule that we make the decisions here. We are not stupid, we actually realize what you're doing. And we are going to keep organizing and we are going to stand against you. He was sad when uh, he has seen the strikes. And then he was also sad realizing that we have done mistakes. Today, Gorillas is about this, 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 all the things that you said before. So it's okay, so basically cut out this part uh, from here? Yeah. Do you feel it? I feel it. Sick. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Printing? Printing. Give it a dry run, just yeah. for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Smoke a cigarette, I'm, and I'm, I'll get you there. I'm, I'm doing it already. When you're a startup growing this fast, it's not going to be a smooth journey. Uh, I don't do the media's boiling part, man. But otherwise it's denial. Makes sense, actually. Okay. Let's go. So, as you know, uh, we built, we began building the business one year ago, and one year ago we were like doing the pitches, uh, and at the same time doing the ride sh riding shifts and everything. Nothing, nothing makes me prouder than communicating that. I don't know. Like I think I need to be under pressure. I don't want to record it. Like, let me do a free form, okay? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't like yeah. looking at the camera. So we are now around 500. So let's kick it off. So as you know, the media is boiling. And one thing I should say is, gorillas never hire someone to fire. We never hire to fire, period, ever. Santiago was terminated because there, there are a couple of clear expectations and some code of conducts. 
And in multiple occasions, in multiple occasions, we, we detected that there was misconduct and that's why within the probation period, we unfortunately had to terminate Santiago. This is one part of what has been happening, okay? There's a situation like this and this is what happened. The second part of the process is how and why this happening escalated. It's a quite a different story. First, it's picked up by a small group of our bike crew members. This is totally okay. You know, like at the end of the day, it's not easy to see your fellow bike crew members that you're riding together, that you share the same passion is, getting, is being terminated. So of course we understand and we explain, but it's not okay using Santiago's termination to create an overarching political ambition, to political play. So Gorillaz is a stance against the vulnerabilities of the gig economy. Gorillaz is a company with goodwill. Gorillaz is, is an embodied version of being riders first. Gorillas is about riding, it's not about politics, and it's never gonna be. Solid. Yeah. Solid, and yeah. rock solid, very good. Good, good, good. It's good. Very good. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for helping, yeah. Alle die Dinge, die hier auf der, auf der Liste stehen, sind Fragen für die betriebliche Mitbestimmung. Alles. Also die Fragen beispielsweise der Schichtplanung, des Einsatzes von Mitarbeiterinnen und Mitarbeitern, das Gewicht der Rucksäcke, äh, kaputtes Material und nicht vorhandenes äh, Arbeitsmaterial zum Beispiel, die Sicherheit von Beschäftigten oder auch die Einstellung und auch Entlassung von, von Beschäftigten. Alles Themen für die betriebliche Mitbestimmung. Und wenn es keinen Betriebsrat gibt, dann wird es eben schwierig und dann äh, landen die Proteste möglicherweise, wie wir es bei den Gorillas gesehen haben, auf der Straße, wo sie ausgetragen, aber nicht gelöst werden können. We are here all to listen, and but most importantly, we are we are here to act. And you know, I'm sincere about changing many things, and we have changed many things, and we have a crisp plan. So, like, I'm I'm here. Just ask me everything. Can you explain like why it was easy to open up a new branch in London instead of changing the bikes or in improving the conditions? Why, why did you pay attention non equally? Your attention clearly is not on us. It's on expanding and making more money. Maybe it's not yours and investors, but you gotta talk to them. Guys, we can lose this shit, you know? We want what our work is value, like what value of our work is. We go to customers every day and day, 60 kilometers every day with bike, on a bike, in the summer, in the winter. And the winter was not prepared for us. We didn't have jackets, we didn't have proper shoes, nothing. You could have thought about it in the summer instead of opening new branches or planning new branches, you know? Khan, you should make your company biggest in the world, but you have to pay attention to your workers. Who is doing the old work? Just, just to give. Just to, just to give one example, like just to ask. Wir sind die erste Company, die irgendwie von Anfang an ganz klar gesagt hat, dass Gig Economy für uns absolutes No-Go ist. Also wir stellen jeden Rider irgendwie fest bei uns ein. Wir stellen irgendwie E-Bikes, wir stellen Equipment. Und das nicht, weil es irgendwie von außen so losgetreten wird oder weil irgendwelche Leute laut geworden sind, sondern weil es von Anfang an genauso war. Natürlich könnte unser Rider Support hundertmal besser sein. Natürlich müssen wir als Company dafür sorgen, dass wir 100% der Leute on time und richtig bezahlen. So. 
Das sind Themen, die, die für uns so, auch so glasklar sind und die uns jeden Tag irgendwie wehtun, dass wir sie noch nicht hundertprozentig hinbekommen. We are the most important part of the company. You told me this when I started the job. So how you can act like this still today after one year? I mean, believe in me. If we are, if this is, a, if this would be the second priority, like it would be even, even different. Like I, like believe in me. We are going all in in this topic. I'm super sincere about it. I know that not only me. But my team and Khan and anyone else in this company, we have good intentions. And we really want to change things for good, right? I've been on sick leave for the past two, three weeks because I had a work accident because of a faulty bike. And one of the reasons we are protesting here is these faulty bikes. The equipment is not safe for us and we would like to have the ability to choose between a bike that will kill us and, or a bike that can help us be more efficient as a rider. So we are not told to pull, take this bag, which weighs 14 kilograms, 16 kilograms. We want to have limits on the weight. We are the ones carrying these backpacks and everything. They are not only violating our rights as workers, they are violating our rights as human beings. I'd like to see them try work in a kitchen, you know, and then talk about human rights violations where you're doing 14 hour shifts with no fucking break, you know what I mean? Gorillas, it's, it's a hard job, but there's a lot of positivity here, you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff here that you get as a rider that puts you leagues ahead of every other job. I don't know, people don't realize how good they have at working in this job sometimes. You only care about the profits, right? Yeah. You think so? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What made you think that way? <laughs> People want always more and more sometimes. Some points are super fair and I totally agree, but some points were a bit taken too much. I, feel, I felt like that. We don't want to have to come back to the warehouse, take an order, run back outside without being able to take a washroom break sometimes, especially on Friday nights. Without being able to take a coffee break, a cigarette break. We're here to work, we're here to get the job done. And once we get the job done, we can enjoy and talk about it. But while we work, we work. The, the riders need to have a voice, need to stick together, but at the same time, there's a way we need to do it that it benefits everybody. Because the concept is we as riders and the CEOs and the people who manage us, I think we're all meant to work together. I believe we're all meant to work together. Because at the end of the day, if the company isn't doing well, we also won't be doing well. Yeah, so maybe maybe I say a couple of words. Hi, uh, um, please. Some things, I would say, chill out a bit. It's, uh, it's a bit too much, I think. I actually share the same thing with you, you know, like with the same excitement. With the same excitement that we... we no, it's not excitement. Yeah, not excitement. It's uh, frustration. On my yeah. Board. yeah, totally. totally. It tends to be miscommunication from top to the bottom. But I know, I, I personally feel like at the top, the CEO has relatively good intentions. Like, why wouldn't you? Um, it's like, come on. So, change is coming. Key thing is, I love that, you know, you stand for what, what, what you believe in. And I again tell what I believe in. I'm a rider by heart. I have this tattoo here, and this is, this is for a reason. So, it's, uh, I, 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 I Khan made a mistake when he tried to give the impression that he was somehow just like the people working for him. And he came out with this comment that I'm a biker too. That was really a foolish thing to say because nobody believed him. But more importantly, there was no need for Khan to say, I'm a biker. Khan doesn't need to be a biker. He doesn't need to be someone who knows every aspect of the job as well as the people who work for him. What Khan needs to do is run the best company, provide his workers with the best benefits and pay, and also be a CEO who goes out of his way to be a good citizen for the cities and states and countries that he operates in. Did we make mistakes? Of course we did. Could we do less mistakes if we did it slower? Of course we could. In Anbetracht der Tatsache, dass es sehr viele Konkurrenten äh, gibt inzwischen, wäre es wahrscheinlich sträflich gewesen, langsamer zu wachsen. Dieses schnelle Wachstum des Unternehmens innerhalb eines Jahres von 0 auf 10.000 Beschäftigte, das ist einfach zu schnell.
Bereits im Juni hatten wir über die Proteste von rund 50 Mitarbeitern berichtet. Jetzt hat das Berliner Start-up Gorillas mit einem Gegenschlag reagiert. Es hat allen streikenden Fahrern gekündigt. Wilde Streiks sind in Deutschland illegal. Das ergibt die Rechtsprechung, das gibt die ganze Rechtslage. Der Streik war das schlechteste Mittel für die Beschäftigten, weil sie halt ihren Job losgeworden sind. Now the tone has changed to more, I would say, uh, quite aggressive and kind of a witch hunt really on Khan and the company. We are sick of the way Kagan Suma and the Gorillas management ignores the demands of the Gorillas workers. That's why we took some super glue and put it into the exploitation machine of Gorillas. And that's why I'm firing Khan. Ich glaube, das ist eine kleine Gruppe. Ich glaube, es ist eine sehr politische Gruppe. They have given themselves a platform which allows them to have a much larger voice than they actually represent. Wenn so ein Laden erstmal das Image einer Schweinebude hat, dann ist die Idee möglicherweise kaputt. So did Khan make mistakes? 100%. I've been his most vocal critic. But do I believe that Khan deserves to still have that reputation? No. This is my video of how I felt the first year in the business. I was basically doing every single shift all day, every day, pitching investors. And this is what brought us here. You know, this is all of you had some shapes or forms this in your life so far. This is what brought us here, but is it what will bring us, you know, to the next step? And is it sustainable? It's not, yeah? Consumer is constantly asking this question. What else can we do? How can we do better than we are doing today? And how do we delight customers across multiple channels and multiple categories. So I do truly believe that Gorillas is going to do well long term, assuming that consumer is able to convince everyone in his company. In the beginning, you're yourself, you know, you can, you can be, you're accountable for yourself. Now, in multiple aspects of the business, we have stakeholders, you know, our bike crew is one of them. Um, our Our investors is one of them, our suppliers is another of them. So we are, I'm actually uh, in, in the middle of multiple stakeholder business, which is like thousands of people and, uh, and making like millions of uh, euros of revenue and giving millions of euros of wages. And uh, like it's a, it's, a, it's a big ecosystem that we have been building and it's still super small. So it's not a question of freedom, but it's more like a question of accountability and responsibility. So, cheating and get together. I, didn't have, I don't have an agenda or anything. I just want to celebrate all of, all of you, you know? And so many, so many positive stuff, you know? Like, the, not only the momentum, but the partnerships, the team vibe and everything. Thank you very much. I, want to, I, I just want to come here to thank and answer your questions. So I don't have any other, uh, any other agenda. So. The way he transitioned from being a founder to a CEO, that probably wasn't an easy journey for him either. Um, but he understood that it was necessary for the people he was leading and he made the transition with just sheer determination and yeah, love for this company. Also er denkt ja wirklich 24 Stunden am Tag an Gorillas. Wir waren wir zum Beispiel was essen und dann kam Kahn mit, mit seiner Freundin und meint so, ja Sonja, wir müssen mal was machen mit meinen Freunden. Müssen wir zusammen essen gehen mit meinen Freunden. Und letztendlich waren die Freunde alle unsere C-Level, die dann zum Dinner kamen. Also er ist dann schon besessen von, von, von Gorillas ja, und von der Idee. Und ähm, man fährt nicht zu den Olympischen Spielen, wenn man vier Wochen vorher auf Mallorca im Urlaub war. Das ist einfach so. The thing that makes Khan special is that he understands if all Gorillas does is deliver groceries, Gorillas is going to fail. It is the only business model I've ever discovered that guarantees that a rapid grocery delivery company will lose money on almost every order they fulfill. 
toilet, get some water. All right, when the next surge comes, go, go time again. They're going to do what they can to influence retailers to say to them, why can I receive my groceries in 15 minutes, but I can't receive apparel or shoes, a handbag, cosmetic, electronics, and so on. So if Khan can get the capital, Gorillas is really going to have a bright future. And I think a lot of people are going to be amazed at just how different Gorillas looks one year from today. We need to make this sustainable, sustainable for our people and sustainable in terms of the business. And then we will build a story that we will tell to all of our grandchildren. I think this has the possibility to create the next Amazon, but this time coming out of Europe. So now we need to make this too big to fail. We build a fucking amazing business and let's just be authentic, bold, true to our values and let's just change this thing, yeah? Love you all. Yeah, I'm back in the game, man. I feel it. We are in San Francisco. Where the money is. <laughs> About to raise a significant sum. Including that's the biggest thing the world has ever seen. Yeah, you. <laughs> Tell the truth, man. Tell the truth. We are not sure if we're gonna race or not, but we pretend like we're gonna race for sure to everyone. You know, today we haven't raised 1,000, not 10,000, not 100,000, not 1 million, not 10 million, not 100 million. We raised 1 billion. Im 2012 war ich Investor bei Lieferando. Damals sind im ganzen Jahr 300 Millionen in Deutschland investiert worden. In einem Jahr, in alle Unternehmen hier in, in ähm, Deutschland. Und äh, ich meine, jetzt machen wir in einer Funding Round äh, eine Milliarde. Ich meine, eine Milliarde, da könnten wir die ganze Straße hier kaufen, ja, und, und mehr. One day my grandma called me. She has a tablet, you know, she has a tablet that she uh, translates some articles here, and she told me that, Khan, uh, I want to talk to you. There are a couple of things that I read and I want to understand. Uh, there I said, okay, if my grandma from her tablet is, you know, like reading this, that's a real big scale thing. Im deutschen Ökosystem, da kannte man solche Beträge bisher noch nicht. In dem Sinne kann man schon sagen, ordentliche, ordentliche Runde gewesen. Und ja, aber auch die letzte für Gorillas. We don't have time to lose, eh? No, you don't have time to lose, so you've got to get everybody seeing the future, Khan. We need pictures, vision. Kurz nach dieser Riesenfinanzierungsrunde hat sich das Finanzierungsklima weltweit krass verändert. Es gab den Krieg in der Ukraine, es gab eine drohende Rezession, die Zinsen sind total ähm, angestiegen. Und auf einmal war so ein Geschäftsmodell gar nicht mehr so interessant, sondern eher so ein bisschen das Kind, mit dem keiner spielen will. And that is the prove it to me moment for Gorillas, where investors say, all right, Khan, I'm going to give you 200 million or 400 million. Collectively, we'll give you another billion. But by 2023, if you aren't close to be profitable, we're not going to give you capital in 2023. And there's certainly not a chance we're going to give you capital in 2024. And that's why in the second phase of second phase of world as we're going to build. Profit. One year ago, everything was speed and growth focused. Today is all about profitability, efficiency and being sustainable. And that is a major shift. Eigentlich spielt Profitabilität für Investoren am Anfang erstmal gar keine Rolle. Es geht eigentlich wirklich nur darum, okay, wie schnell kannst du jetzt wachsen? Diese Investoren sind Investoren auf Zeit. 
Und zu deren Geschäftsmodell gehört die Beteiligung, aber auch der sogenannte Exit. Und wenn die Marktanteile gut genug sind, das Wachstum stark genug sind, dann weiß ich als Investor, dass ich einen Kollegen-Investor finde, der genauso denkt wie ich und dem ich das dann weiterverkaufen werden kann. Sobald äh, Investoren anfangen zu rechnen und die Budgets so ein bisschen reduzieren, sagen so Leute, jetzt müssen wir mal anfangen, Geld zu verdienen hier, wird das ein ganz anderes Spiel werden. You're so close, man. You simplify everybody's lives for the better. This is not enough. There's some lost opportunity and we need to professionalize the company a little bit. And for that I need to professionalize myself, yeah? And Gorillas hat in der ganzen Zeit, die es am Markt war, wahnsinnig viel Geld verbrannt. Ich habe interne Unterlagen einsehen können und bis Sommer 2022 hat Gorillas 760 Millionen US-Dollar verbrannt. Investors globally have pumped in 16 billion dollars in an industry where not one rapid grocery delivery company has become profitable. And so one of the things that me and other people in the industry are looking for is are these rapid grocery delivery companies able to stabilize their operations? We believe that, you know, bold people and authentic people, they can change things for good. And I think we have been creating this change for a while, yeah? like uh, all of us. You know, like this is our base and on top of this, you know, the macro environment, you know, the competition and everything. So now we have two focus. One is the foundation of the business. You know, we need to keep that building block at the very base. Um, and second one is the profitability. Super important. So let's go and make this thing profitable. Eh? Wir haben jetzt 25 Warenlager, die profitabel sind. Das heißt, es ist ja offensichtlicherweise physisch möglich, so ein Warenlager profitabel zu betreiben. Ja. The market dynamic change will take it to profitability. Dass sie mal profitabel werden, behaupten diese Player ja alle ganz gerne. Ich würde sagen, dass sie den Beweis erstmal noch erbringen müssen. Also bisher ist da gar keiner profitabel oder auch überhaupt in der Nähe davon. Consumer knew he was in trouble. Gorillas was burning through, in some cases, nearly 60 million dollars a month. He needed to have another billion, and frankly, he knew he needed another two billion dollars. And the reason why I say that is I don't see anything that Gorillas is doing that's going to be generating large profits. I mean, there are some days, you know, in your life, it's hard to forget. And unfortunately, today is one of, one of those for me. Two months ago in March, I'm sure you're quite familiar. The world entered to a different economic mode. All of this money that's injected in the, uh, in the economies is being pulled back. Basically, it changed the world economy upside down. And as a consequence of this, you know, uh, what happened is we went from pure growth to efficiency and we adjusted uh, our run rate accordingly. And at the moment uh, we are we are sitting, although we are sitting on a healthy run rate and we are the by far the most efficient among our peers, we have now a new reality. So as a result of this new way of working, new areas of working, uh, we're gonna need new staffing needs and 300 teammates will be impacted from this. I want to thank you for all of these 300 teammates. For the ones who are staying, I invite you to help our people that are impacted to have their next steps and leave their legacy with with, with us. Yeah, let's, let's make sure that Let's make sure that we carry this legacy. It's a new plan, a new beginning, but let's just focus on our people at, until Friday and Monday. Uh, we begin with the new strategy and everyone
will be communicated, you know, the new strategy, the priorities and everything. Again, thank you very much. Tough times, but we'll grow less, we'll grow stronger from this. Gorillas had to lay off a large number of people. And they did that for one reason, one reason only, to try and cut costs. And then to be able to go to investors and say, see, we have a much lower operating expense on a monthly basis for our company. And so you can invest capital in us and we're going to be investing that capital into our operations without having a large headcount. The belief that we have that this is a category defining camp company and that this category is there to stay, that belief didn't change. 2021, there were 15 players, and today, more or less, you can count four. And Gorillas at the moment is at the pole position to turn this corner in a very strong way. There was, there was no doubt after that. Stand heute, es ist auf dem Papier drei Milliarden groß. Mein Investment hat sich in der Zeit äh, verzehnfacht. Also es wäre stupide nicht anzunehmen, dass es auch implodieren kann. When you're when you're building the company, it's okay. Growth, less calm, it's an amazing, you know, constant celebration. But what happens when markets are down 90 percent? What happens when you need to cut four markets? What happens when you need to terminate 3,500 people? And so Gorillas terminated as many employees as they could. They shut down as many micro-fulfillment centers as they could, but it was never enough. The market forces right now. We just need uh, maybe a bit more time. So not raising capital meant only one thing. Gorillas was going to die as a company. When Getter acquired Gorillas, Consumer walked away with a small amount of capital. Auf dem Papier waren seine Anteile ja auch mal sehr sehr viel Geld wert, also zwischenzeitlich sogar 300 Millionen Dollar. Khan wanted to disrupt grocery retailing as we know it. He wanted rapid grocery delivery to become the norm, and Khan wanted to have a global company. That didn't happen. So technically, consumer lost. Imagine yourself, yeah, like just for a second, just get out of this video and imagine yourself in a seven bed hostel room and Rosenthaler Platz, Berlin, you know, you look at the ceiling and you dream about it, you know, you, you have 30 day tourist visa, you have COVID all around the world, you have zero money in your bank account. What would you aim for, for, for the three years? You know, what would be, what would be your goals? You know, maybe you can say a, a good family, you can say, healthy in mind, body and soul. You can say an eight digit bank account. You can say a confident entrepreneur that has built amazing stuff. You can say a lot of relationships, friendships, mentorships. I'm not gonna tell if I accomplished 
those. I'm not going to get deeper into these, but many has been written about, uh, like the steel gorilla story, you know, winners, losers, evils, many things. And the truth is, there's no winner and loser. I don't feel like that at least. And for that one, I like from the bottom of my heart, you know, I, I just want to thank you, you know, thank you for believing in me. Thank you for following me. Thank you for teaching me. Thank you for evolving me to a much better person, to a better version of myself, basically. And right before the uh, next year, I wish you all, um, I wish you all happy holidays and a good and rush, you know, I love this German word. And thank you very much and see you next time. Bye bye. So what is the lesson learned from gorillas? Enthusiasm isn't enough. Capital isn't enough. You must always have a viable business model. However, when you have a business idea, don't hide it, share it. Be enthusiastic like consumer, be dynamic like consumer, be someone who was fearless like consumer, but you need to do a better job of coming up with a business model that's viable. I'm definitely a lot more tired than I was before. <laughs>was Gorillas schon geschafft hat, ist so ein komplett neues Geschäftsmodell in Deutschland zu etablieren, was es ja vorher auch noch nicht gab, muss man ja auch echt sagen. Und ich glaube schon, dass das bestehen bleibt, das wird es nicht wieder weggehen. Große Supermarktketten, große Discounter, die werden zu den Ankerinvestoren dieser Schnelllieferdienste werden müssen, weil das Geld eigentlich im Einkauf verdient wird. Und diese Position brauche ich einfach. Ja, Geld verdienen kann ich damit nicht, aber ich kann damit ganz andere Sachen machen. Ich lerne meine Kunden auf eine ganz neue Art und Weise kennen. Und dass man ursprünglich damit mal Geld verdienen wollte, das wird bis dahin längst vergessen sein.